Hanman Winery Tour at Putin Bay. Yeah. What? Daddy said he likes the stone path. This is pretty. Everything smells like eggs to me. Huh? Everything smells like eggs to me. Alright, 
so this is our blending room. This is where all the magic happens. Our head winemaker is Ed Heinemann. He is a fourth generation in the Heinemann family. He is in charge of the whole show when it comes down to our winemaking. Him and his crew are going to decide which wines they're going to want to work with, and then first up, they pump all of those wines into this barrel right here. If it's going to be a blended wine, this is where they are going to blend two or more types of wine together. And if it is going to be a sweet wine, this is when they are going to start adding sugar to it. Then they're going to pump it through this pump, and it goes through this filtration system. There are 19 of these filters, and they are placed in between all of these slats. And the wine is then forced through these filters until it is completely crystal clear and free of all possible sediment that may have been missed in the previous processes. Then it's going to be pumped over to this container next, where Ed is going to taste it and decide what he wants to do next with it. He might be adding more sugar or what have you, and then he's going to have us try it, and then he's going to tweak it again, then he'll try it, then we'll try it, and this continues until he decides that he has a completely perfect product on his hands. Then he's going to pump it into the next room where it will be bottled and labeled. If you look over here behind you, this is our old bottling machine on display. This was completely manual and it only did five bottles at a time, so it was a very long, painstaking process. And right next to it is our old corking machine. From what I understand, this corker would sometimes jam the corks too fast into the bottles, making them shatter. So it was also a very messy process. So in 1999, we decided to upgrade to a better system, and that is going to be in the next room over here. So watch your step on these hoses and the on the floor. <clears throat> That's the bottle corker. The red one. So this is actually a real corker. Yeah. They're telling you how they make it. Everyone's accounted for? Yep. All right. So this is our bottler machine. When this is in use, the first person is going to be standing on this end, just feeding in these plain glass empty bottles right onto this conveyor belt, where they are then taken over to these platforms, where they are going to be raised up into these spigots. That is where they are going to be filled with either wine or grape juice. Then they continue on down the line towards this silver hose. This silver hose is just going to shoot a tiny bit of nitrogen into the bottle, which is going to clear out all possible air that may be in the bottle. We don't want any oxygen in there because it will make the product go sour before you get it home. This is where all of the caps would be lining up, and they are going to be placed on top of the bottle, and then this mechanism here is going to screw them on so it is completely airtight. This machine does both corks and caps. Right now it's set for caps, but if it was set for corks, this entire cage would be facing this way, and it would be filled with corks, and there would be um, a silver box at the end. The silver box has a hose for the nitrogen, and it also has a contraption that's going to shoot the cork into the bottle. It's completely airtight without shattering it. Then over here, there's going to be another person on this end just placing on these plain cellophane wrappers right to the top of the bottle, and then it is ready for the next step in its journey, which is right over here. So they're going to be putting these bottles right onto this conveyor belt, and then they will travel over towards this silver cylinder. The silver cylinder has a heating coil inside of it, which is going to place itself around the neck of the bottle for just about one second, and that's going to heat it up just long enough to make that cellophane wrapper airtight and completely wrapped around the bottle. Then it's going to continue down through these rollers where the label is stuck on, just like a regular sticker, and then he's going to pick them up off the off the bottom of the conveyor belt, just check to make sure everything looks right, the sticker's on straight, and then they get put in these boxes and they're ready to go into the next room and they're ready to be sold. Hmm. So we're going to head up these stairs, just watch your step because they're a little uneven. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know what temperature they do keep on for sure, but I know it is cold. as cold as they can have it. Okay. Because oh. that's that helps the wine in the process. It's better to keep it cool. Nice. We have everyone? Yep. yep. Alright, so these are all of the wines that we currently have available right now. They are in order from our sweetest all the way down to our driest. 
Our sweetest wine that we have is our Sweet Belt. Our Sweet Belt is um, basically high in sugar content, kind of like that of a fruit punch. The next one here we have is our Sweet Concord. This one's also very sweet. We coined this our adult grape juice. The next one on the list is going to be our Pink Catawba. Our Pink Catawba is on the sweeter side, but it's not overwhelmingly sweet. It is a blend of our Catawba and our Concord grapes. And it is our most popular, best-selling wine, and it has been since it was first bottled in 1972. If I had to compare it to something, I'd say it's similar to that of a pink Moscato. Next here we have our Niagara. The Niagara is going to be the sweetest white wine that we currently have. Again, it is not overbearingly sweet. It is actually kind of light and crisp. It's good for summertime drinking. Here we have our white Riesling. Our white Riesling is on the drier side compared to white Rieslings that you may find elsewhere. However, um, it is still pretty much straight in the middle of the road in terms of dryness. So if you're not sure if you want to go sweet or dry, this may be a good place to start. Here we have our Burgundy. Our Burgundy is a very juicy, medium-bodied red wine. It is a blend of our Concord and our Ives grapes. It is an Islander favorite and it is also one of my favorites. Here we have our Chardonnay. As I said before, none of our wines are oak, so our Chardonnay is also an oak. It has much more of a grape forward flavor instead of that oaky flavor to it. And then last but not least, we have our two driest red wines. Um, the Cedarwoods Red is probably our most popular dry red wine, whereas our Claret is the driest of the dry, and it's actually kind of new. We haven't made it in about 15 years, and we just started making it again a couple weeks ago. This one's going to be our grape juice that we currently have. Unfortunately, we are out of Concord right now. We're in the process of making more. So right now we only have the white one, which is our Catawba. This is not going to be pasteurized. It's not going to have any added sugar, and it has no added water. So it's going to be very similar to just eating a grape straight off of the vine. And over here we have our ice wine. Our ice wine is our dessert wine, and it undergoes a completely different process. So it is um, a little more on the pricier side, and it is very sweet, it's very rich and creamy, it's kind of similar to honey in flavor. It does go through a different process, so it is a lower alcohol content. It's at about 9%, whereas the rest of our wines are going to be about 12%. And unfortunately, your drink tokens are not valid for ice wine, but you can still buy it by the bottle or the glass inside the bar. If you're going to be buying six or more bottles today, we do offer 6% off. And if you're going to go for 10 or, or 12 or more bottles, it's 10% off. And if you want four or more bottles of wine, but you're not trying to carry them all over the island with you, we do offer free shuttle for your wine to the Jet Express or the Miller Ferry Dock. So just let them know what boat you plan on being on, and your wine or grape juice will be there waiting for you. Do any of you have any questions? All right, so if you want to head inside towards the front of the building, you can go up to the bar and redeem your drink tokens for either a glass of wine or grape juice.